Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. This is episode 14 in my first playthrough of the British campaign here on Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. If you did not see the first 13 episodes, there's a link in the description below. And also to let you know, if you haven't already heard, we are doing a giveaway of your choice of either this game or Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, the limited edition, which is playable right away. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to a page where you can enter by logging in with your YouTube account. You can get an additional entry by following me on Twitter, and that's all uh, spelled out for you when you click on the link for the entry. The drawing will happen if we can hit 15,000 subscribers by midnight January 1st, by the first of the year 2020. And there's a good chance we can do that because we've got a lot of folks, about 80% of the views that happen on this channel uh, belong to people who have not yet subscribed. And we've been making a real run. We've been getting about 150 subscribers a day. We need to slightly get better than that, maybe around 200 a day between now and then to hit that magic 15,000. But when we do that, I will do a drawing and I will announce that on uh, January 1st. You get your pick of either game and we'll send you a key for that and you'll be able to start playing right away. Uh, so just follow that link, do that, subscribe if you haven't already so we can get over that magic number and then let's see what happens. All right, so we're going to continue on with the campaign. We have this mission here. Speaking of January 1st, it's called Blockade. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're up against in this one. So here it looks like we've got an interesting combination. We've got three squadrons available to us, at least two here, one here, and one here have to be naval. I'm going to take some troop ships because I don't know what I might face. Plus, those troop ships might come in handy trying to board somebody. So, uh, Here's what it says. Despite all our efforts, Savannah River mouth were blockaded. Our troops in town are cut off from sea. They're running out of ammo and supplies, and we have no other option but to break through the blockade to deliver 56 regiment and huge amounts of cargo. East India ships, uh, company ships are armed well, but fully loaded, so sail very slow. You have to secure at least two of them to grant an adequate relief of our troops in the town. Okay, so first things first, we're going to load up the Whitby. So we're going to grab some of these units from reserve. Oh, we've got a promotion here. We've got uh, some, it's amazing. All these other units have been in multiple battles, but the skirmishers who just had their first battle are the ones who actually get the very first uh, level up. So we've got a chance to go a discipline training or endurance course. Uh, I feel like with skirmishers, I probably want to go for the stamina, efficiency, and speed. Uh, if they were regular troops, it would be a different story, but we'll do that. Uh, but that's not who I want to go with right now. I want to I want to load up some of these other troops so we can get them on the Whitby. Now, we have to do this kind of weird thing here where we click on one, and then we do this. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's just how it is. So now we'll get these these troops aboard the Whitby, and we'll use those either as a landing force if it gives us that option to help support what's happening, or we'll use them as a force to go and try and board someone. So those are the options there. I'm also thinking I might just have the Darby ready just in case we have an opportunity there as well to do the same thing. So Darby's got obviously a small crew, but they've got those troops, those skirmishers, so we'll have them available. We'll even do the same with the uh, George the Third, just in case we've got room for that many ships. I don't, I don't know if we do or not, uh, but primarily this is about the big boys. Murders Henry, surprised, undefeatable. Hermione, resistance, indefatigable, and we want to make sure that all of them are as ready to go as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is just one more time check out available weapons and see if there's any place where I can upgrade. Uh, my guns. Uh, there's an. Right now we have the Armstrong's guns, which is right here. So there's nothing we can do with that. Six pounders, same thing. We already have the best available. I'm going to do the same for each of those. And then the next thing I want to do is I actually want to go back and look at the upgrades on these ships. We've got 126,000 in money. May as, may as well upgrade the ships as much as possible. One of the things I'm going to do, and one of the things I learned from ultimate general civil war is that sometimes if you buy up the available weapons that are sitting in the shop it replaces those weapons so i'm just looking at these but all these 42 pounders uh obviously are not available for the current 
ships that I have. So what I need are some bigger ships to be able to use some of these huge guns like this. And uh, as I look at the ships that are available, I still don't have anything that's better than a, uh, there we go, a fifth rate Hermione class, the fifth rate Porcupine class. I don't even have any Diana classes available to me right now. So hopefully those are coming soon. So let's go ahead now um, and look at possible upgrades that are available to these ships. Murder Murders Henry's got um, all of their upgrade slots filled, but that doesn't mean I can't uh, do a little better. And somebody mentioned the power of the double shot module when you get in close. So I'm thinking for someone like Undefeatable, that might be an option. Hermione's actually got a spot available. So let's take a look at those real quick. The double shot module right here, double charge module, same thing. Uh, double charge uh, gives an option to double in close quarters. Lower initial ball speed means lower armor piercing, but who cares on that uh, pistol shot distance? Double shot um, can obviously do some real damage too. So a couple of different options there. I want to look over at the Whitby. I don't know if we can do, you know, we can only do one upgrade there. So, um, you know, honestly, I'm not really sure where I want to go with these upgrades. I might want to save my money in case a really big ship becomes available to me. Um, for now, I think what we'll do is we've got a lot of room as far as capacity goes. So I might choose this one. Oh, that's going to even reduce what I've got available. I think I'm just going to stick with where I'm at right now. Okay, so here we go. As always, it was kind of indecipherable to figure out what the instructions were supposed to mean, but we've got six hours, and here are our victory conditions. Uh, we must save the Earl of Mansfield, the Blandford, and the Speed Speedwell. That's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but the Mayflower, that famous ship that brought the pilgrims over in 1620 to America, originally didn't sail alone. Uh, there was a second ship called the Speedwell that went with Mayflower. I know this because my ninth great-grandfather, Thomas Blossom, who also happens to be an ancestor of both U.S. Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama, Thomas Blossom was one of the uh, the, the deacons of the that church in Leyden, Holland. Uh, he was on the Speedwell. And the Speedwell kept leaking, and they had to put back to port once, and then finally decided Speedwell wasn't going to make the voyage. So they loaded as many of the people from the Speedwell onto the Mayflower as they could. My Thomas Blossom was one of the people who stayed behind and came over years later. But that's pretty cool. That's a name. So we've got to save those ships. They've got to reach the safe zone. And we can see it really is a blockade. I mean, he's got this thing about as blocked as it can be. So... We're going to send our three squadrons straight forward, and we're going to have to be careful with Whitby, George III, and Darby. We just want to make sure that they don't try to get into too much combat, because they're obviously not built for that. I am going to keep these ships kind of following one another as best I can. We'll see how that works out. And we got to find where those ships are that we've got to get to safety, because right now I don't see them. I'm guessing we probably have to capture them. He's got a troop ship back there himself. I guess maybe they'll probably appear at some point. We're going to have to get them to go through here. So I think we're just basically here to plow the road, so to speak, for these other ships. we got to steer clear of uh, getting ourselves grounded here. Which way is the wind going? Okay. So I don't want to go too close to land over there, but that does mean I'm going to be kind of going to the side I really don't want to, but that's okay. Okay, here we go. First things first, let's get everybody switched over to chain shot. We're going to see if we can slow these guys down. Now, 
And then as soon as any of my troop ships get close to one of his, we're going to try to board right away. Especially with that big one, with the Whitby. Alright, I don't know how much we're going to be able to do a chain shot from this distance, but we're certainly going to give it a try. I'm actually going to go solid here because we're going to be nice and close. Let's tell them to hold off until we're in the right position, though. Whitby, there's our, our troop ship. Come right up in between here. We're going to see who we can grab. third squadron. Oh, these are the first two. Okay. Resistance has the third. Oh, we got the uh, Sybil on fire. That's cool. Gotta be careful with undefeatable here. Alright, there's a big one. That's probably the one we should be going for with Whitby. Good news is we're going to get him on the other side, so we'll hopefully have the wind for us there. I get Murderous Henry to follow undefeatable. Drop your sails for a second. Let this guy pass. Come on, Whitby. Let's get in there. I want that big one. Alright, we're going to have to start bringing these guys over this way. your target. Gotta be careful here with Undefeatable. She might get lit up.
nice to get my hands on this ship. Lagging behind with this other squadron. Let's bring George. Let's do these ships separately and see if that helps. The only problem with the Whitby, of course, is that it's slow, and of course, you can see how many men they're losing from being up close. I've already lost 62 men. What I don't want to have happen is have the crew get in shock because of how much damage they take. Entirely sure why they're not boarding yet. Why are you not boarding? Sit here and shoot it out with this guy. Come on, board him. Absolutely, just let him get away. So the troop ships are kind of worthless for anything other than transporting troops, apparently. All right, lesson learned the hard way. Looks like he's coming back around, but that's gonna be ugly if we try to board this guy, I think. Murderous Henry's taking it kind of rough at the moment. send resistance over to deal with these guys. What a mess. Oh boy. The Sen's about to be out of action though. Undefeatable's gonna get right in the middle of all this. Yeah. 
And my own ship's gonna get in the way of me being able to board him. go again. Crew shock, so now we're probably not going to have much success. Should have happened a long time ago. Whitby starts boarding. Yes, yes, it's working. Even though we're in shock, it's working. I don't know why it didn't work with the other ship. And we're going to lose a ton of men. Would have lost far less if I hadn't taken so many casualties leading up to this. We took it. Excellent. Let's get them out of here. That was really ugly, but it worked. The main thing is I've got the money and the resources to replace everything I'm losing to uh, deal with the damage that I'm taking and repair it. All right, I think we can probably go to solid shot on this guy now. We're about to take that ship. All right, here come the ships that we've got to protect. Shouldn't be a problem. This ship surrendered. I gotta. I'm gonna take Murderous Henry kind of out of the action. This ship's just about out. Yeah, we'll just go this way. Get indefatigable to follow them. Let's come right up alongside this guy. And a solid shot. So who's left? We've got the Sen, who's nearly sunk. This one, who's surrendered. And we've got two troop ships over here. Oh no, we got two really small vessels. I'm not too worried about them. Resistance is making its way over there to deal with them. Kingbird's coming out this way. We're going to deal with them with Georgia III. Oh, we've still got this big troop ship here, too. Yee, that's a problem. All right, we're going to send, send them that way. Who's over here? Oh, we still got the Sybil. Alright. We're going to get Le Conquerant out of here. Whitby can probably stay in the action, although eh, they're pretty damaged too. I'm probably better off just to take them both out. Indefeatable. Let's finish this guy. Indefatigable, same thing. Let's get turned around. Murderous Henry, we're going to keep out of the action. This ship is surrendered. I probably should have taken it. Let's come up and finish off the Sen.
All right, the ships we've got to protect are in the battle area. Now that I took out the big one, I'm not too worried about all this. Sen's going to be gone. We've got one big one to worry about over here, but we'll deal with Sybil soon enough. I think I can shoot it out with Undefeatable with this guy and be okay. Indefatigable can come deal with Sybil. Resistance is going to deal just fine with these two. That's only the second one of the three to even come into the area, so we'll have his fleet pretty well taken care of before they ever get near danger. The Conquerants need to be get, needing to be getting out of here. Same with the Whitby. Although I could probably keep the Whitby around, I probably could have taken the flesh with the Whitby. Hermione, let's go grab this ship so it doesn't come back to haunt me later. What's going on with these guys? Resistance is going to get a real nice shot here in a second. Zephyr just about got sunk. Most of its armor is gone. Undefeatable, they're in kind of bad shape. Not just kind of, they're in pretty bad shape. All right, surprise, you get over there too. Hermione, get up here. Alright, he's coming out to meet these guys. This is a problem. Let's go ahead and get these two ships over here. Sybil's effectively dealt with, so it's not an issue. My problem right now is uh, dealing with those two that are getting away. I probably should have left. In hindsight, I probably would have been better off to leave these troop ships out here so that they could escort these guys in when the time came. But let's see if we can avoid them to this side. Uh, because he's going to have to come against the wind to get at me. Go a little faster, please. Let's not follow each other. How's that? Right, surprise is going to come up and finish this one off. We'll let Hermione deal with Sybil. Sybil. 
at least keep Sybil occupied. Oh, that's the one that I I knew I should go back and deal with. They're starting to recover. We can do that. We can get up here. Undefeatable's in bad shape, but they can still deal with them. Point Sybil's just basically gonna be out of action. All right, Earl of Mansfield and Blandford are successfully navigating past these guys who find themselves in no man's land all of a sudden. So we'll just start going this this way with these guys just to kind of shield a little bit. This ship will probably get sunk. I guess we're going to take Murderous Henry and Lenaida and just take them out. Silver was sunk. Other one's not far behind these little, I guess they're probably American ships. Yep. This one won't take much to sink either. All right, Hermione, let's see what you can do here. Put your sails down. There we go. Oh, let's turn and get a good angle. All right, I want to try... Try some canister fire, some grape shot here, because uh, if we can kill some of these men, I'd like to grab that ship if possible. We gotta be careful with undefeatable. Undefeatable's in bad shape. Not nearly as bad shape as the Rayus, but still dangerous. I can't believe La Flèche hasn't sunk yet. You guys just run for the line. La Flèche is sunk. There it is. Who's that leave? That leaves these two that are completely worthless to the to the French Navy. That leaves Rayuse, which is about to sink. Oh, we got a fire. That's a problem. And that leaves Sybil. If we can get Hermione to, to board, that would be ideal. After we get some canister fire into him. Speedwell just now got into the battle area. Wow, that took a while. You just go as fast as you can in that direction. You two keep doing the same thing. This started out super ugly for me, but once I grabbed that big ship, it got much, much better. We're going to send... Undefeatable. After resistance finishes off Zephyr, I think we can still use Undefeatable to sink the Sin, because it's almost gone. The cool part is, he's about to have nowhere to go with a lot of these. So those troop ships that he had going after my other ones just uh, just left the map. At least one of them did. The other one's about to. Alright. That one's sunk. Now let's get Undefeatable out of here. 
Uh, to once again defeat the Ryus, we're probably going to have to sink her. Finish the Sybil. And this will be a about as complete a victory as I could ask for. USS Kingbird has retreated. That's the other troop ship that was out there. Zephyr was sunk. All right, let's be careful here, Hermione. All right, slow down. shock. Oh boy. Yeah, good thing we're boarding when we are. Alright, so far not so good. Not good at all. George III, you might have to come over and do this because I think we're going to lose Hermione. Yeah, that was bad. Cut it. Get out of there. Gonna have some major repairs to do to Hermione as well. First two ships almost to safety. Third one's gonna take a little while longer. Indefatigable. I don't know why we're retreating with them. Murderous Henry's out. Undefeatable's on the way. Alright, Hermione got away. That's good. Get your sails up and get out of there. Alright, there's not a lot else to this for us, so we'll drop out and then just see what action happens. Values just got sunk. That leaves only the Sybil left among the French ships that are still manned and afloat. Alright, so we turned Hermione around and just laid into the Sybil. Pretty good, taking down most of her armor. But we're coming over with the George III to try and board. We may not get there before Hermione sinks it. I'm going to go ahead and tell them to stop firing. What we need to do is board, uh, board the Sybil before the leftover crew from some of these other ships get a chance. Alright, we need to get in there quickly before... He gets a broadside on me. There we go. Man, this thing is just brutal. It, no matter, oh, there we go. But I thought I saw the number start going down rapidly, but I guess not. Sybil, we're just going to have to sink it. Nobody's having any, any success against this ship. Oh, we just lit up some of the survivors over here. A lot of them are just landing on the beach. Let's see where the, where the last of the ships that need to escape are. That would be the Speedwell. Way back here still, so a little ways to go. Oh my goodness. I don't know what the Sybil has, but I, I should have just sat there with Hermione and just 
sunk the darn thing because George III. So the troop ships can be really effective if you can get them in close without a lot of danger, but I might have just signed the death warrant for the George III because I don't know that we're going to get it out of here. We gotta hurry up down here with the resistance and try to nail this thing. So definitely some disastrous happenings with my troops on these troop ships. We gotta be super careful with the troop ships. Especially over here where I'm stuck with the wind. We're gonna we're gonna lose this thing. Let me get the men off just in case. resistance deal with it. I'm not too worried about the George the Third in terms of it being a troop ship. And him sinking it, so it's a huge deal. Alright, Sybil surrendered. There we go. That's it. That's victory. We didn't even have to wait for everything else to happen, so a lot of those casualties were just due to my own kind of negligence and, and fumbling around with these troop ships, but all in all, a good day. We took out an entire fleet of 10 ships. Um, we saved all the ships that we needed to. We even grabbed a nice big one in the process. Um, got some promotions among our crew. Uh, we captured a ton of 1777 sea service. Uh, weapons. We got a 68 gun ship. Let's take a look at that thing. Okay, now we've got 158,000. Uh, the, the more important thing, though, is that we've got this big ship. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. We are not sending that one to the Admiralty. We are most definitely going to add it to the fleet, but it's going to take almost all my points to do that. It's a third rate Ardent class. Heck yeah, we're adding that. Uh, 1800 in available weight let's see if there's any other bigger guns we can put on this thing uh now it looks like the 24 pounder bogard's guns are the best but man oh i'm so glad to get my hands on that we're gonna see what what our repairs are gonna look like here because i know we're gonna 2000 repair there but honestly it's not a not a huge deal we've got that um the Leneda, that's a 46-gun a ship. That's pro, that's a Hermione class. Uh, right now, we'd have to send it to Admiralty. So we're probably just going to sit tight with it and not do anything uh, until we're in a position to where we can do something uh, and, and actually add that to our fleet. In the meantime, let's just get these other ones all repaired. Not a whole lot of... Honestly, it's not that huge a deal that we have to repair these because uh, we've certainly got the money for it. Oh, yeah, we'll send those to the Admiralty. Those aren't really ones I'm going to use all that much, The um, these American ships. Uh, for now, we'll sit tight there with these Whitby repair. Uh, we did lose quite a few men, and uh, but you can see... They not only went from one star or from zero stars, they went all the way up to two stars. So uh, even though I it looked kind of ugly, uh, that fleet battle really paid off for these troops aboard the Whitby. They're going to come in really handy now, and they've got major upgrades that we can make. Uh, of course, the tricky part is that we uh, it's going to get expensive to replace the men that we lost, but I'm excited about that. That's that's really nice for me moving forward. We'll be able to make some significant upgrades. And I think that battle may have been a point at which I really set myself up for great success moving forward in this campaign. So we'll worry about all the rest of this later on with the upgrades because we, we can look at, well, let's take a look at one of them at least. Uh, we've got morale and efficiency speed and efficiency and stamina i think we're going to go morale and efficiency here but then i want to look at the the two star upgrades melee morale and stamina firearms reloading time uh firearms plus 10 but a, a hit to reloading time and accuracy uh here we've got a bonuses for reloading time and accuracy and honestly i think that's probably what i could use the most so we'll do that at least for them we'll worry about the others later 
Let's see. Uh, there's a new Diana class frigate available, but not much else. But man, I cannot wait to take uh, this one into service. We're going to have to rename it. We can't go into things with a French name like Le Conquerant. I guess that probably means the conqueror. But there you have it. Let me know your thoughts, and we will kind of regroup and get everything built back up, get a crew assigned to this thing, and move forward uh, in the next episode. Thanks for watching.